everyone and welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the topic measurements 2. So as usual, let me start by giving you the quote of the day, which states that you can't be what you haven't seen. So we'll discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we'll be looking at uh, the micrometer screw gauger. Remember we said we have uh, different instruments which can be used to measure accurate diameters or small length of given object. So in our previous class we did look at what we call the vanier calipers. So today we are looking at another instrument called the micrometer screw gauge. So the word micro means actually very small. So actually a micrometer screw gauge can be used to measure very small length. For example, the diameter of a very thin sheet of paper can be uh, estimated or can be measured accurately by use of an instrument called a micrometer screw gauge. Then it is also screw gauge because the ratchet, uh, this ratchet here is somehow like a screw because it can be rotated. Uh, it can be rotated. So hence the word a micrometer screw gauge. Also for a micrometer screw gauge, the measurements are always taken in uh, millimeters. Uh, that is a uh, smaller units such as the millimeters. So uh, the micrometer screw gauge is used to measure small diameters such as the diameter of a thin wire. The diameter of a thin wire can be estimated using a micrometer screw gauge. Also we've said the diameter of a thin uh, sheet of paper. So maybe in an exam you can be asked to state uh, which instrument will be appropriate for estimating the diameter of the following uh, objects. One you'll be given the diameter of a thin sheet of paper or you can also be given the diameter of a thin sheet of paper or a thin wire. So the answer will simply be a micrometer screw gauge. Then if you want to obtain the inner diameters of objects such as maybe uh, a small tin or even a, a, a marble, we did say that uh, in that case, uh, or the inner diameter or even the outer diameter, in most cases we used what we call a vanier calipers. But for smaller uh, diameters such as that of a thin sheet of paper or a thin wire, we use what we call a micrometer screw gauge. That is when a better accuracy is required than that, the accuracy which can be obtained using an ordinary meter rule. So the micrometer screw gauge is used to measure small diameters such as the diameter of a thin wire. Then a micrometer screw gauge consists of a U-frame carrying anvil at one end. So this is what we are calling the U-frame, uh, this, uh, this frame here. So it is called a U-frame because, as you can see, it is in letter U. It is like a letter U, hence the name U-frame. So it has, it consists of a U-frame which carries an anvil at one end. So this is what we are calling the anvil, uh, this other, this part here. This is what we are calling the anvil. Then a tempo which carries a circular rotating scale known as the tempo scale. So the anvil is also connected to what we are calling a tempo. This is our tempo, which consists of the tempo scale. This is what we are calling the tempo scale, which is which of course is uh, can rotate. Then we have uh, the sleeve scale. This is what we are calling the sleeve scale because it is within the sleeve. So this is the sleeve scale, which is always measured in uh, millimeters. So then these are half millimeter divisions. The half millimeter divisions meaning if from here to here if it is one millimeter then it means from here up to the half a millimeter this will be half a millimeter so remember that uh, dimensions uh, or measurements using a micrometer screw gauge are always recorded in uh, millimeters but remember for avania caliper we did say that uh, measurements are always recorded in centimeters are always recorded in centimeters so we are saying that a micrometer screw gauge consists of a U-frame carrying the anvil at one end, a tempo scale which carries a circular rotating scale known as the tempo scale, and a spindle which can move uh, forward and backwards when the tempo is rotated. So this is what we are calling the spindle. The spindle actually also can rotate. Remember the rotating part is the ratchet here. It is rotated so as to adjust uh, the spindle to grip or to hold the object uh, firmly within the anvil and the spindle. So we are saying that the sleeve has a linear scale in millimeters. So this is what we are calling the skill, the, the sleeve. 
So the sleeve has what we call the sleeve scale. So the sleeve scale divisions in millimeters. So this upper part, uh, this is what we are calling the sleeve scale. It is linear. Linear means it is in a straight line, as you can see here. It is in a straight line. So we are saying that the sleeve has a linear scale in millimeters, and then the thimble has a circular scale of 50 equal divisions. So this is what we are calling the thimble. So this part here, from here actually covering up to this part here, this is what we are calling the thimble. Then the thimble, it has a scale which is called the thimble scale. It has what we call the thimble scale. So the thimble scale is usually circular. It is a circular scale of 50 equal divisions. So the number of divisions in a thimble scale are usually 50. So we are saying that the sleeve has a linear scale in millimeters and a thimble has a circular a scale of 50 equal divisions then the ratchet at the end of the thimble this is what we are calling the ratchet it is at the end of actually the thimble uh, prevents the user from exerting undue or excess pressure on an object when the micrometer screw gauge is in use so the purpose of the ratchet is to ensure that to prevent uh, the user or the person taking the reading from actually uh, exerting undue or excess pressure on an object when the micrometer screw gauge is in use then the linear scale has half millimeter max so this is what we are calling the linear scale so you can see the half millimeter divisions huh? the half millimeter mark so it means the distance from here to here is half a millimeter but the distance from here up to the next mark here is actually one millimeter so that means from here up to maybe somewhere like here we'll be talking of five millimeters but if you take the distance from the zero mark up to maybe somewhere like up to this half division then we'll be talking of 4.5 millimeters the 4.5 millimeters then uh, the distance moved by the spindle in one complete rotation of uh, the thimble is known as the pitch of a micrometer so if you move if you move the thimble in one complete rotation that is that distance uh, moved by the spindle that is uh, this spindle here remember when you move the ratchet uh, when you rotate the ratchet the spindle also rotates by the same amount of rotation so we are saying that the distance the amount of distance moved by the spin the spindle in one complete rotation of the thimble is known as the pitch of a micrometer so you can be asked to define what we mean by the pitch of a micrometer so you simply say that the pitch of a micrometer refers to the distance moved by the spindle in one complete rotation of the tempo. The distance moved by the spindle in one complete rotation of the uh, in one complete rotation of the spindle of the tempo. Yeah. So if we rotate the tempo in one complete rotation, that is from one part until it comes to the same same part. That is, if it moves through, uh, maybe we can talk of uh, 360 degrees. Huh? That is one complete rotation. So the distance covered by the spindle, remember when you rotate the thimble, the spindle also rotates by the same amount. So if the thimble is rotated through 360 degrees or in one complete rotation, that distance covered by the spindle as the thimble rotates in one complete rotation, that is what we are calling the pitch. So we are saying that the distance moved by the spindle in one complete rotation of the thimble is called the pitch of a micrometer. Now, uh, since the spindle advances, to advance is to move forward or retreats. To retreat is to move backwards. So we are saying that since the spindle advances or retreats by 0.5 millimeters per complete rotation of the thimble, then it means the pitch of a micrometer will be 0.5 millimeters. So we are saying that the spindle advances when it is moved forward or it moves backwards by it moves forward or backwards by 0.5 millimeters in one complete rotation of the tempo then that is what we are calling the pitch of the micrometer so we are saying that since the spindle advances or retreats by 0 0.5 uh, millimeters per complete uh, rotation of the tempo then the pitch of the microscope is 0 0.5 millimeters then thus it means that each division represents a spindle travel of so if you are saying that in one complete rotation actually uh, the pitch of the microscope will be of the micrometer will be 0 0.5 millimeter then we have just said that the thimble scale usually has 50 equal divisions so it means it means that each division or the distance covered by each division of the spindle will be uh, that is the pitch which is 0 0.5 uh, 
uh, millimeters divided by the number of divisions which is equals to 50. So if you take 0 0.5 you divide by 50 you actually get 0 0.01 millimeters. So 0 0.01 millimeters is what will act as our uh, least count uh, as we saw in uh, vanier caliper. So the least count for the case of uh, a micrometer screw gauge will be represented by 0 0.01 millimeters. And you are saying that the 0 0.01 millimeters is coming because that is the distance covered by each division of a thimble scale in one complete rotation of the thimble. So if the thimble is rotated in one complete rotation, it covers a distance of 0 0.5 millimeters. Then because it has 50 equal divisions, therefore it means the uh, distance covered by each division in the 0 0.5 millimeters or in the one complete rotation will be 0 0.5 millimeters divided by 50 which comes to 0 0.01 millimeters. So that that is what will act as our actually list count in the case of micrometer screw gauge. Hence if the thimble rotates through one division the spindle actually advances or retreats by 0 0.01 millimeter or which is also equivalent to 0 0.001 centimeter. However, some micrometer screw gauge have a pitch of, they have a pitch of uh, 1.0 millimeter and 100 divisions on the thimble. So a, some micrometer screw gauge will have a pitch of 1 millimeter. Now such micrometers, use micrometer screw gauges, usually have 100 division on the thimble. So that means that the distance covered in one complete rotation of the thimble by each division of the thimble scale will be uh, 1 millimeter divided by 100 divisions, which still comes to 0 0.01 millimeter, 0 0.01 millimeter. So let's discuss how to use uh, a micrometer screw gauge or how to take measurements using a micrometer screw gauge. So the object whose diameter is to be found is held between the anvil and the spindle, which uh, are actually the jaws. So if you want to take measurement or to measure length of an object using a micrometer screw gauge, the first step is that you place the object in between the anvil and the spindle. So the object is placed between the anvil and the spindle or between the jaws of the micrometer screw gauge. Then the micrometer screw gauge is closed uh, using the ratchet until the object is held gently between the anvil and the spindle. Then you rotate. Uh, Remember when you rotate the ratchet, uh, actually the spindle moves depending uh, whether the rotation is clockwise or anticlockwise. So this, the spindle moves appropriately. So when you rotate the ratchet, the spindle could be moving advancing forward or it can also be advancing backwards. So if the object is here, then you are rotating the ratchet in such a way that the spindle is moving forward. It means the spindle gets to a point whereby it grips uh, or it holds that object tightly between the anvil and the spindle. So you are saying that to use a micrometer screw gauge, the first thing is that you place the object whose diameter is to be found between the anvil and the spindle or between the jaws. Then after that, the micrometer screw gauge is closed using the ratchet until uh, the object is held gently between the anvil and the spindle. Then after that, the ratchet will slip uh, when the object is gripped firmly enough to give an accurate reading. When you rotate the ratchet, uh, immediately it holds the object tightly or well, it produces some uh, some sound, like a click sound. Uh. That is what you are calling a slip. Uh. So it, you will just hear that sound if you are using the actual, actually, micrometer's screw gauge. It produces some, somehow some click sound, uh, which shows you that it has actually gripped the object well. So that ensures that there is accuracy. So uh, the ratchet will slip when the object is gripped firmly enough to give an accurate reading to give an accurate reading now how do we make measurements uh, on a micrometer screw gauge so just like in the vanier caliper whereby we said that readings are taken in two steps that is uh, the first step involved the main scale reading then the second step actually involved the vanier scale reading so for the case of a micrometer screw gauge also readings are taken in two steps so the first step we take what we call the sleeve scale reading then two, we take what we call the thimble scale reading. Then, of course, after that, we, we sum the two. So we said that for a micrometer screw gauge, the readings are always taken in millimeters. The readings are always taken in millimeters. So to take reading using a micrometer screw gauge, first of all, you take the sleeve scale reading. So the sleeve scale, you just 
take reading on the sleeve. Uh, you read the sleeve divisions actually after rotating the spindle such that the object is held firmly between the anvil and the spindle. So you take the sleeve scale reading. So for the sleeve scale reading, you actually read uh, the age of the tempo. So this is where the tempo actually starts from. So you read a mark on the sleeve scale that is immediately before the tempo scale. So like for this case, assuming this was my zero, then uh, this is uh, zero, zero millimeters, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So like for this case, my sleeve scale reading will be eight millimeters, the eight millimeters. So you just take a reading that is uh, very close uh, or immediately to the left hand side of the tempo. So to take the sleeve scale you read at the edge of the tempo. You read at the edge of the tempo. Then to take readings on the uh, tempo scale here now you read off opposite the center line of the sleeve. Then you multiply by 0 0.01 millimeter which in this case represents the least count but for the case of a micrometer screw gauge. So to take readings on the tempo scale you actually read off opposite the center line of the sleeve scale so if this is the our sleeve scale actually the sleeve scale this is the center line of the sleeve scale so you can see the center line of the sleeve scale is aligning with one marker on this particular thimble scale so suppose this was maybe one two three four five six seven then my thimble scale reading will be one two three four the fourth mark why because the fourth mark is exactly aligning uh, it is aligning with the center line of the sleeve scale so you read a mark on the thimble scale that is uh, opposite the center line of the sleeve scale then of course if this is one two three four so if it is four then you multiply by 0 0.01 millimeters which of course represents the least count but for the case of a micrometer skew gauge so you take four times 0 0.01 you actually get 0 0.01 0 0.04 millimeters then after that you add the two you add the two so when you add the two you will actually get the diameter of that particular object then reading of a micrometer screw gauge are always taken in millimeters so that is uh, worth repeating that whenever you are taking readings using a micrometer screw gauge always uh, the readings have to be recorded in millimeters unless otherwise stated uh, so we can look at an example involving a uh, reading uh, a micrometer screw gauge so the question reads that what is the reading of the micrometer screw gauge below what is the reading of the micrometer screw gauge below so we did say that for a micrometer screw gauge readings are taken in two steps one you take what we call the sleeve scale reading then two you take what we call the thimble scale reading then you multiply it by 0 0.01 which represents our list count then of course you sum the two so here we'll start by sleeve scale reading so sleeve scale reading we did say that you read at the edge of the thimble so if this is the thimble the thimble actually starts from here so this is the edge of the thimble so you read a mark on the sleeve scale that is exactly to the left eh, or immediately before actually the edge of the thimble scale so if i look at the thimble scale here if this is zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the mark on the uh, sleeve scale that is coming immediately before the edge of the thimble is actually the 19th mark. So it means the sleeve scale reading will actually be 19 millimeters because we said for a micrometer screw gauge readings has, have to be taken in millimeters. So the sleeve scale reading you just read a mark that is uh, at the edge of the you read a mark that is at the edge of the thimble. So our sleeve scale reading will actually be the 19, 19 millimeters. Then the thimble scale reading, we said for the thimble scale reading, you read off opposite the center line of the sleeve scale. You read off opposite the center line of the sleeve scale. So like for my case here, this is the center line uh, of the sleeve scale. So if you look at the center line of the sleeve scale, it is aligning with a certain mark here. So if this is the 45 millimeter mark, it means this will be 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. So uh, the center line of the sleeve scale, this is the center line of the sleeve scale, is aligning with the 
49th mark it is aligning with the 49th mark so you will take that 49th mark but because it is the thimble scale you multiply by the pith you multiply no you multiply by what represents the uh, least count in this case so the least count for a micrometer screw gauge is represented by 0 0.01 millimeter so you take the you read a mark on the thimble scale you just read uh, a mark opposite to the center line of the sleeve scale so the center line of this sleeve scale is this one this uh the bold one so it is exactly aligning with the 49th millimeter mark so you take that 49 but because it is the thimble scale you multiply by 0 0.01 millimeter so 49 times 0 0.01 millimeter you actually get a uh, uh, 0 0.49 millimeter then of course you sum the two you take 19 millimeter plus 0.0, .0 uh 0 0.49 millimeter you'll actually obtain 19.49 millimeter so that will be the micrometer screw gauge reading so the reading of the object is actually 19.49 millimeters we also look at uh, what we call the zero error but for this case for a micrometer screw gauge remember we also talked of uh, the zero error in uh, vanier caliper so uh, also a micrometer screw gauge has what we call the zero error so as in the case of vanier calipers micrometers microme uh, the the there occurs a zero error in a micrometer screw gauge so the zero error arises when the zero mark of the thimble scale does not coincide or align exactly with the center line of the sleeve scale when the micrometer is closed so when there is no object uh, between the anvil and the spindle or when the micrometer is closed uh, actually you realize that in some cases the zero mark is supposed to align with the center line of the thimble of the sleeve line yeah but if the micrometer screw gauge is faulty or if it is not working if it has an error you realize that when the jaws are closed that is when the anvil and the spindle are closed the zero mark of the uh, thimble scale does not align with the center line of the uh, the center line of the sleeve so if they don't align when the micrometer is actually closed it means there is an error it means there is an error otherwise if it was working well or if it was accurate actually when you close uh the 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 anvil the anvil and the spindle or when the micrometer screw gauge is closed the zero mark of the thimble has should align with the center line it should align with the center line of actually the sleeve so in this case we say we have a zero error so we are saying that uh as in the case of vanier calipers there occurs zero error in the micrometer screw gauge it arises when the zero mark of the thimble scale does not coincide exactly with the center line of the sleeve when the micrometer is closed so the anvil is usually used to adjust uh of the zero mark we saw the anvil in our previous diagram so its purpose sometimes it is used to adjust the uh zero to adjust the zero so that the micrometer has no zero error so like uh we are seeing in these figures here so if a micrometer screw gauge has a negative zero error actually when the micrometer is closed or when there is no object between the jaws such that the anvil is in contact with the spindle we expect the zero mark to be aligned with the center mark but if it is in such a way that the center line of the sleeve is above the zero mark of the thimble then in such a case we say that the micrometer screw gauge has a negative zero error so like for this case what is represented the negative zero error is actually simply this like uh, one two divisions then of course you multiply by 0 0.01 so when it is crossed the zero mark is here but it's supposed to be here so it means in this case we say it has a negative zero error so we are saying that a micrometer screw gauge is said to have a negative zero error if the zero mark of the or if the center line of the sleeve is above is above the zero mark of the thimble that is when the micrometer is closed then of course to correct the like in the micrometer like in the vanier calipers to correct the negative zero error you add you add that error to the final reading then if a micrometer screw gauge in, is in such a way that when the spindle and the anvil are in contact with each other or when there is no object between the jaws of a micrometer screw gauge uh, we expect the zero mark of the thimble to align with the center line but if you realize that the zero mark 
or the, the, the center line is below the zero mark of the uh, timber scale, that is when the micrometer screw gauge is closed, then in such a case we say that the micrometer screw gauge has a positive zero error and it needs to be corrected. So to correct a positive zero error, you simply subtract that particular error to the final reading of the micrometer so let's look at an example involving uh the zero errors involving the zero errors so the example reads what is the diameter of an object if the micrometer screw gauge below has a zero error of negative zero point negative zero point two three millimeters so this is a zero a negative zero error so we said that a negative zero error is corrected by adding the error to the final reading so first of all here we obtain the reading on a micrometer screw gauge we say that readings are obtained by reading two scales one is what we call the sleeve scale reading and the tempo scale reading then of course we obtain the micrometer reading so in this case the sleeve scale reading we said that it is the linear one huh? it is called the sleeve scale because it is found within the sleeve of the micrometer screw gauge then this one is called the tempo scale because it is found within the tempo of the micrometer screw gauge so if an object was placed between the anvil and the spindle of a micrometer screw gauge uh, then these are the, the readings that were obtained so the sleeve scale reading we said for sleeve scale reading you said you read at the edge of the timbo so this is the edge of the timbo so you look at a mark that is coming immediately before the edge of the timbo so if you read this one we have actually if this is a uh, zero then this is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten then automatically this will be eleven this will be eleven but we have a half a millimeter here so this one means if this is ten uh this one means if we have a ten here then actually this will be if this is ten then this is eleven then this represents eleven point five that's this this represents half a millimeter or zero point five so you take eleven plus zero point five you actually get eleven 0.5 you get 11.5 so the lower marks these ones represent the half millimeter so if it is indicated on a diagram or on the micrometer screw gauge you must consider them but in like in our first example they were not the half millimeter were not indicated so you you we didn't consider them but if they are there you must consider them when reading the uh, sleeve scale so here if this is nine if this is a uh, one two three no zero one two three 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, then this will be 11.5. This will be 11.5. So the sleeve scale reading will be 11.5 millimeters. Then the timber scale reading, of course, for the timber scale reading, we said you read off opposite the center line of the sleeve scale. So this is the center line of the sleeve scale, huh? a mark that aligns or coincides with the center line of the sleeve scale that will represent our timber scale reading so the timber scale reading in this case will be it is actually this mark so if this is 20 then this is 25 then that means if this is 20 this is 21 22 23 24 25 so the mark that is is aligning is actually the 21 the 22 mark the 22nd mark is the one that is aligning with the center line of the tempo of the sleeve scale so because the mark that is aligning is actually the 22nd mark it means our thimble scale reading will be 22 so the thimble scale reading is on the 22nd mark then of course we said for the thimble scale you multiply by 0 0.01 millimeters which represents the uh, least count but for the case of a micrometer screw gauge so you multiply 22 times 0 0.01 millimeter you actually get uh, i think it will be uh, 0. Uh, 22 0.22 uh, millimeters 0 0.22 millimeters so you take 11.5 uh, millimeters plus 0 0.22 millimeters you'll actually get 11.72 millimeters you get 11.72 millimeters but our micrometer we were told our micrometer it has a negative zero error so we said to correct a negative zero error you add it on the final reading so the final reading is 11.72 so to correct that error because it is a negative we correct it by adding so we take 11.72 millimeter you add 0 0.23 millimeters you actually obtain 11.95 millimeters 11.59 millimeters. 
so lastly i have an exercise here involving the same which i recommend that students should try so the exercise reads what is the diameter of an object if the micrometer screw gauge has a zero error of positive 1.37 millimeters so maybe just to give you a clue is that whenever an error is a positive one you will actually subtract it from the final reading to actually get the actual uh, diameter or measurement of that particular object so here is the diagram so i've worked out and the expected under is actually 9.48 millimeters so try working out and see whether you get the same in case you didn't understand just preview our previous examples or even you can drop a comment on my youtube channel then i'm ready I'll, I'll be there to actually help where necessary so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that you can't be what you haven't seen you can't be what you haven't seen so what does this particular quote mean so this particular quote means it simply means that we need to be exposed uh, to new environments new experiences and meet new role models in order for us to grow you cannot dream of becoming a musician a footballer a teacher a comedian an engineer or even an, an entrepreneur if you haven't met or seen one of them so the problem with our society today is that we meet similar people and similar experiences in similar environments every day that is why it becomes very difficult for us to think outside the box so what we need to do is that we need to widen our scope and see things from different angles or different perspectives and remember this just because someone tried something and failed does not mean that thing is impossible and also just because someone did something in a, a certain way or in a certain way or in a particular way uh, then uh, and succeeded does not mean that is the only way that that thing can be done you can still do the same same thing but using your own unique ways uh, and still achieve the same same results and lastly you are not what you think you are you are not what i think you are instead you are what you think i think you are and therefore as you think so you become i know i've confused you so i'll repeat i've said and lastly you are not what you think you are comma you are not what i think you are comma instead you are what you think i think you are therefore as you think so you become i said you are not what you think you are you are not what i think you are instead you are what you think i think you are therefore as you think so you become this is kind tuition academy kindly hit that subscription button on youtube thank you